Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you're working with me, when we're working together. Today is our lesson number 17, and we are on page number 89. The very first problem on page number 89 uh, is uh, number 98. And as you can see, this problem is already on the blackboard. As always, I'm going to read the problem to you, then I'm going to get out of the frame. You're going to pause the video, you're going to do it yourself, and then we'll compare your work against the work that we do together. Okay, here we go. We are told that k is an integer. Whatever the k is, is a whole number. This guy is a whole number, it's an integer. And we are also further told that 0 0.0025 times 0 0.025 times 0 0.00025 times 10 raised to k is also an integer. Question simply is, what is the, le what is the least possible value of k? In order for this to be true, what is the least possible value of k? Let me erase the thing, we don't need this mumbo jumbo. I just wanted to make sure that I wrote it correctly. Then I just missed, I didn't miss anything. I didn't mess it up. So one more time, 0 0.0025, 0 0.025, 0 0.00025 times 10 raised to k is an integer. Least possible value of k. Pause the video and do it yourself. Let's do it together, shall we? Before we do this together, let's do another problem, a baby version of it, a simpler version of it. So here's the problem, very simple one. If we are told that a is equal to 30 times 10 raised to negative 7 times 10 raised to m, what is the least possible value of m that you can find which make this thing an integer? We want to, a has to be an integer. Now we could actually leave it the way it is and simply claim that m is 7. If m is 7, a will become 30. But that is not the least possible value. The least possible value here, in order to find the least possible value and still keep the m as a whole number, is to write this 30 as 3 times 10. 3 times negative 7. And now we only need 3 times 6. Or rather, 10 raised to 6. 10 raised to 6 and 10 raised to 1 will take care of all of this part and a will be a whole number. So in this case, the smallest possible value of m is 6, not 7. Now do, let's do it together. We don't need any of this thing and we need the room, so I need to erase it. So this guy here, we have four digits here. 1, 2, 3, 4. This can be written as 25 times 10 raised to negative 4. Similarly, this can be written as 25 times 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 10 raised to negative 3. And similarly, the last part can be written as 25 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 raised to negative 5 times 10 raised to k. Now, what we need to understand here is that before we can figure out the least possible value of k, here we have 25 times 25 times 25, 25 times 25 times 25, and then we have 10 raised to 10 raised to negative 4 and negative 3, that's negative 7. This is negative 5, that makes it negative 12, and 10 raised to k. What's the smallest value of k that we can find which will make this an integer? Now what we need to understand here is that in this problem, as opposed to the one we just finished, in this problem, when you multiply these three quantities, and we don't have to multiply, you don't have to waste your time trying to figure it out. We really don't care what 25 times 25 plus 25 is. We don't really care. What we need to understand is that whatever it is, is going to end in a 5. 5 times 5 will end in a 5, and then 5 times 5 will end in another 5. It's not going to end in a 0. This, is not a, this quantity, whatever it is, is not a multiple of 10. So this is going to remain the way it is. And it's already an integer. Therefore, the smallest value that we can find of k, which will make this thing an integer, is 12. We could have 13 here, but then this will make 25 times 25 times 25 times 10, whatever that happens to be. We could make it 14 here, 
but this is the smallest one. This positive 12 will get take care of this negative 12 and we we'll end up with an integer. The smallest value of k is 12. The smallest value of k happens to be the largest value in the answer choices. Let's do the next one. 99. Let's see what we have in 99. 99 is also something that's going to require some thinking on your part and my part. 99. We are told that a times a plus 2 is equal to 24. We are also told that this is also equal to b times b plus 2. But the condition here is that a cannot equal b. Let's erase the thing, we're done with all of this, we don't need it. So one more time, a times a plus 2 is 24 and so is b times b plus 2. The question is this, then how much is the sum of a and b? And here are the answer choices, negative 48, negative 2, positive 2, positive 46 and positive 48. Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself first. Well, let's see what we can do. Keep in mind that A does not equal B. A cannot equal to B. We're looking for their sum. So let's start with the first one. A, a times a plus 2 equals 24. That's very straightforward actually. That's very straightforward. It's simply 4 times 6. 4 times 6 is going to give us 24. The tricky part is to figure, I shouldn't have written my answer choices here because we need the room. Let's do it on the bottom here. The tricky part is to figure out what to do with this guy. B cannot also be 4. They have to be different. A does not equal B, we were told. Maybe B is 6. If B is 6, we're going to end up at 8, and that does not equal 24. We got a problem. And the clue to this, uh, this problem, the clue, clue to, do, to what we're looking for, lies in the answer choices. The fact that we're looking for their sum, the fact that we're looking for their sum, and yet, some of the answer choices are negative quantity. That is your that is your cue. That is your clue. That is your hint that something fishy is going on. Perhaps we need a negative quantity. How else are you going to get some to be negative? Let's try something negative, shall we? Let's try something negative. Well, we had a four here. A was equal to four. Why don't we make B equal to negative four? If we make B equal to negative four, we'll end up with negative four times negative two. But that does not equal 24. Aha! Let's not make b equal to negative 4. Let's make b equal to negative 6. A negative 6. A negative 6 and a negative 4. Voila! Now we got our business. A negative 4 and a negative... Negative 6 and a negative 4 is going to give us positive 24. b is negative 6. There you go. And we were looking for their sum, a plus b. Therefore, a plus b, a is positive 4, and b is negative 6. And therefore, their sum is negative 2. The answer is b. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 100. Let's see what we have in number 100. Oh, number 100 requires a lot of writing. I need the room. I need to raise all of this thing. It requires a lot of writing. Number 100, we are told that there's a gentleman called Robin, or Rob if you like. We are told that he got 8,000 independent votes. Independent votes simply means that these are votes cast by people who were not affiliated, who were not registered by any of the parties. They were not Republicans, they were not Democrats, they did not belong, they were not registered to any party. You know what that means. 
So he got 8,000 independent votes, and we are told further that he also got 10% of party affiliated. 10% of the votes of the people who had registered themselves with certain party. N represents the total vote cast, total votes cast. We are also told that 40% of total votes were independent voters. 40% of the total vote that were cast were cast by people who had registered themselves as independent voters. Here's the question. Total votes for Mr. Robin in terms of N obviously. I don't have to say it as obviously in terms of N. We're going to represent the total number of votes that Mr. Robin got in terms of N, obviously. Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video. Let's begin, shall we? We need the room. You have the problem, obviously. So the simplest way here, it's always a good idea to organize your thoughts before you jump into quote-unquote solving the problem. You cannot solve anything unless your thoughts are organized. Always a good idea. So let's let's have a nice checked up position. Let's have a nice checked up position of Mr. Robin and what's going on in totality. So here is Ra, Ra and we know that he got 8,000 of independent votes and we are further told that he got 10% of the party votes. And you know, you understand what I mean by party vote. 10% of votes of the people who are affiliated with certain party. Here's the total, which we are told is N. And of the total, we are told that 40% were independent. If the 40% were independent, 60% 60 must, 60 must have been party affiliated. Obviously, it has to be one or the other. Now we just have to figure out how many votes he got. It's very straightforward. Or well, at least the first part is very straightforward. The votes that Robin got, the vote that Robin got, the first part is very simple. We are told he's got 8,000 of these votes, independent votes. So we don't have to worry about any of this nonsense. But then we are, got, we told, we are told that he got 10% of the part party votes, 10% of the votes of the people who were affiliated with party. So he got 10% of all the votes cast by people who were affiliated with the party, which is 60% of the N, 60% of N. There you go. 8,000 plus 10% which is 0.1 times 0.6 times N which would be simply 0.06 N plus 8,000. I'm going to put my plus here so it lines up and looks nice. There you go. So to represent the total votes that he got, he got this many votes. He got 8,000 plus 6% of total. That's, that's how many votes he got. This is how we will express it, the total number of votes he, he got in terms of N. There's 201, shall we? The last problem on this page in the left hand column. In 101, we are told that we're going to measure our profit as income minus cost. And that, by the way, does not happen to be an earth-shattering idea. That is how the profit is measured everywhere, all over the planet. You take your income and subtract the cost. And they're using these symbols. P is equal to I minus C. Again, 
mind boggling. This equation has to hold. Here's what we are told. We are told that for each of the first four months C equals I plus 32. I have to make sure that I leave myself enough room there to do the work. Then we are told that for each of the next three months we are told that this equation holds I equals C plus 36 and then for each of the last five months we are told that I equals C plus 10 and what do you suppose the question is? The question is very straightforward. What is the profit for the whole year? How much profit did we make for the whole year given these facts? I plus, 30, I plus 32, second one says I equals C plus 36, the third one says I equals C plus 10. Do it yourself, pause the video and do it yourself. One more, one more thing before I forget it. Make sure you understand this. It says for each of the first four months. It's not for all four months. It's for each. That's what the symbol means. Each month, this equation holds. For each of the next four, three months, this is what we have. And for each of the last five months, this is what. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Well, we have to understand that this equation must always hold. P has to equal I minus C. This is C, this is I, that must be P. This guy must be P, obviously. So let's write this equation in this form. So P has to equal I minus C. P, this implies that P would have to be, which is 32, which is 32, I minus C. So this is I, we need to bring the C here, okay? Follow my pointer. This is I, we need to bring the C here and 32 over there. When we bring 32 over there, it's going to become negative 32. Negative 32 would have to be equal I minus C. You see that? P equals I minus C. Which means for the first four months we made a loss of $32,000 every month. Every month for the, first, for the first four months. So let's take care of that part. So the, our, pro, our profit for the first four months was in fact, our profit for the first four months was in fact loss. Loss in this amount. Let's do the next one. This one implies, let's see where is the P. P is right there. Okay, so that's, we need to bring, has to be I minus C. This is I. This is I, follow my pointer, this is I. We need to bring the C over there. So that makes it I minus C. And now it looks like we made a profit of positive 6, 36,000. This quantity is positive. I minus C, bring the C to this side, bring the C to left hand side. I minus C is equal to positive 36 which means we made a profit of $36,000 for each of the three months. And finally, let's do this one. Oh, this, this one and this one, these are the same exact equation. Just bring the C to this side, I minus C equals 10. Voila. So these are our profit for each of the months in the three, in the three periods. So we made a $10,000 profit for the last five months. That's all. We just have to figure out what that is. Let's do it together, shall we? So, 4 times 30, that's negative 120. 4 times negative 2 is going to give us negative 8. 3 times 30 is 90. 3 times 6 is 18. 
and this is just 50. Let's see what we can do here. I see a negative 120 and positive 90. Let's get it to positive 90 and convert this into negative 30. I see negative 30 and a positive 50. Let's get it to negative 30 and let's convert this into 20. I see a negative 8 and a positive 18. A negative 8 and a positive 18. Let's get rid of negative 8 and convert that into a positive 10. There you go. That's all it is. We made a $30,000 profit. In the course of the year, we made a profit of $30,000. That was it. That was the very last problem on this, on this, in this column, not on this page, on the first column, on the left-hand column. We'll do the problems that are left on the other column tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.